We is are on. Uh, we're we're, we're, we're recording part? live on, on YouTube right now. <laughs> and so then you can go back and see how good you looked on TV. Um, it is on YouTube. Uh, the yeah. thing I don't yeah. like about it is that we can't have the interaction. Yeah, you can't talk to us um, live with somebody yeah. like we used to. If people so joined it, we it. have to. They can watch this and then send them emails or whatever. We don't. Want we to. don't. We're not going to complain because Martin. we're doing a whole lot better than the United States government six hundred million dollar. Well, this is program. True. <laughs> so today's today's lesson. We're in John chapter seven and eight. And the title of it is Wondering About Judgment. And it starts out, we're starting in verse 12 of chapter 8, but I'm going to back up because it didn't tell why they're, or what they're doing here. It just kind of jumped right into the big middle of it. But this is a story. Jesus has gone back to the temple to preach. And you know, we've talked the last couple of weeks where the Pharisees are after him anyway, and, and even last week they said, you know, wow, you know, this is the guy they're trying to arrest. Why haven't they done anything? Well, Jesus was there, but somehow he just managed to just walk right on through, and they couldn't lay a hand on him. And so they came up with another scheme this week on how they're going to trap Jesus and see if they can get him to, to do something wrong or say the wrong thing according to what their knowledge of the law is. And so they brought in a woman who'd been caught in adultery. And if you read back in Deuteronomy, you'll see that, you know, the sentence for that, if you caught people in the act of adultery, that you stoned both people in that, that offense. And so they brought this woman in, and it starts in, in verse 1 there, and I'm just kind of summarizing here, but they brought him in to test him, and it says... Um, Jesus sat down and began to teach, and the scribes and Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery, and having set her in the center of the court, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery, in the very act. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? They were saying this, testing him, so that they might have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground. But when they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to him, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Now, I always wondered, everybody always wonders, what's what he doodling? He on the what's he doodling? We don't know. know. Yeah. doesn't say. Oh, yeah. I think he wrote Does on it? the ground, where is the man? Because what you said, if you go back and say, the law, and so the man wants to be made part of the man, if you'll go on and read the rest of the rest of the, the verses there, Jesus finally asked her, said, where is thine accuser? And she right. said, no man, Lord, no man. There wasn't, in other words, they made it all up. There wasn't even a man to start with. And that's my opinion. Okay. And then it says, he said, okay, if whoever is without sin, cast the first stone. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones. And he was left alone in the woman where Hello. she was in the center of the court. Good morning. Glad you could join us. I've been, I've been just, just, just tell y'all, I've, I've been listening, listening to all y'all said. <laughs> we hope so. But it, but it, yeah. And I will be back next week. You will be back. Yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna demand whatever pay yeah. you're getting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will give it to you. Okay. Thank you. But I will but be, be back, back next week. week. All right. Sounds great. So, there was, so Jesus looks up and says, well, you know, woman, where are they? Where's your accuser? Did no one condemn you? And she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, I don't condemn you either. Go from now on, sin no more. And so then we pick up with today, the, where our, our Sunday school lesson starts with, chapter, or with verse 12 and says, then Jesus spoke to them again, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never work, walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. And then verse 15, you judge by human standards. I judge no one. And if I do judge, my judgment is true because I'm not alone. But I and the Father who sent me judge together. Even in your law, it is written that the witness of two men is valid. I am the one who testifies about myself, and the Father who sent me testifies about me. Which is pretty heavy pretty stuff deep. there. That's, yeah. that's really deep. And I mean, and he throws out, even before he gets to the judgment part about it, he says, I'm the light of the world. 
They hate to hear that. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. To a Jew, to the religious leader, all of a sudden he throws this phrase out. And we'd like to use it a lot. He's still. He's just trying to get. Now you're on there twice. We got two of you. We've got both of your personalities. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Can y'all hear? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, very good. Well, he just we lost, we lost him again. He's had problems with his, with his audio. But what does that mean, I'm the light of the world? That's probably what they were thinking. What's he talking about? Light of the world? What? Well, anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. You know, I mean, being a literal person, what does that mean? Well, okay, I can walk around in the dark. <laughs> well, let me ask no you a question, time. okay? What is more prevalent? What overcomes what? Does darkness overcome light, or does light overcome darkness? Well, and I know the answer. A, it only takes a very light small amount of light to darkness. overcome the darkness. Yeah, but, uh, you've never but, been but darkness overcomes light too, right? Right. Okay, what overcomes what is, is, is whichever you have the most of, and Jesus is the continual light. He's the most light there is. He is He is the one that is. So he overcomes. There's no darkness wherever Jesus right. is at. They might not have understood that. I don't. I, do you think they, I don't know if I understand it or not. Do you think they were as perplexed as we are by those statements? I do. I, do. Yeah, I think so. They're probably thinking no more at night. Well, they got this guy that talks strange words, right? Plus, they're honed in on their Jewish faith. Exactly. And um, of course, we know we've got the whole story. That's to our advantage, and they didn't. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, the Bible says uh, we love darkness rather than light, doesn't it? To say that sometimes men love darkness rather than light. <coughs> What about the judgment? He comes in and says, "Okay, we've just—you've basically judged this woman that we're talking about, and rightfully so. Jesus never said that she didn't commit the sin. If she was caught in the act, he he acknowledged that. We're getting funny sounds over but here. He didn't. He just said, "Whoever among you is pure and hasn't sinned, cast the first stone." So. They, he says, you judge by human standards, which they had the law, they had the law of Moses, and that to them was, I mean, that was the Bible. That's what they had, and so to them, okay, they it says clearly, Moses said, this is what you do. It's pretty cut and dried. But Jesus says, I judge no one, but if I do, my judgment is true. And and he even quotes scripture, and I didn't go back and look that up. Um, but it talks about, you know, if you sent, took somebody to court on the strength of two witnesses, that hey, that... Brad. Yeah, we can hear you. I can, I hear, can you hear you all, but not on my, not on my computer. computer. Not on your computer. So both, so both those things are me, me, and it's and really, it's messed, really messed, messed, up. messed up. So I'm, so I'm, so I'm not so talking, I'm not talking again. again. You're actually coming through very, very cleanly. And uh, the picture yeah, that is, that on, is my on my phone. Okay. But not on your desktop. And I'm watching, I'm watching on, my, on computer. my computer. Okay. But I can't, but I can't talk, talk on the computer. So, so. kind of odd. odd. That is odd. Well, it sounds really clean. Does it sound on your phone? Does the audio from here sound okay? Yeah. 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 yeah I can yeah, hear and hear y'all great. So. Well, then we're not even getting the massive feedback like we usually do. Are, are you getting the three-second delay? Uh, about, uh, about one. one. Okay, so, so that's a little better. Good. It doesn't it, feel like it's delayed too bad. Uh -uh. They changed the dashboard around quite a bit. I guess you've seen that since you're on your computer, so there may be a setting that you've got to reset for your yeah. audio. Yeah, I'll find I'll it. it. In the meantime, go back, go back, go back, go at, back it. at it. Go back at it. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Brad. Okay, so Jesus turns it back around on him and says, well, okay, 
you require two witnesses according to the law, so I have two witnesses, me and my father who sent me, which he's already claimed a couple of times that, you know, he came, you know, that God had sent him, that he came. And so now we've got, he's, he's the light of the world and he's also God's son. And they didn't really take that well at all. No, because they knew, they knew, I think, most of these people in this crowd, somebody knew his, who he was and where he came from, you know, hey, that's that Mary's kid. He's right, always, dude. Yeah, he's well, they knew too him. much about him. And I'm, I mean, I spend uh, <laughs> the last several weeks bashing the Pharisees, but yet we kind of do the same. I mean, we, we don't like change. We don't accept new ways of doing things. We don't, yes. you know, we read what we read, and then there can't be any other interpretation of it, and yet Jesus is here giving them exactly who they're looking for, but yet they're not, they're missing it because they're too hung up in the... Yeah. And the letter of the law. Yeah. Something I read said that every time Jesus says, I am whatever, I am the bread of life, I am the good shepherd, that he is telling us something about God. Of course, he was God in flesh, but he's telling us something about God the Father. And I am the light. Um, Remember in the Old Testament, God says, uh, Moses said, who do I... Th they so sent me. Yeah, I am. And he said, I am. I am. Right. Yeah. Well, that didn't help me to read to see that last night. I am the light. All right. What is light for me? God is. Yeah. I think a lot of our problems are caused because we haven't got the light of God in His Word. And we walk around in darkness making decisions and wonder why we're such a mess. Mm -hmm. We didn't go to the right place to get light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we kind of jumped. I'm ahead sorry. of ourselves. No, this is fine. I was talking about thinking about Rick's sermon this morning, talking about we do things without asking God first. Um, and it's almost that, you know, it's like, well, Lord, I don't understand this. Can you, you know, reveal it to me, explain it to me? The Pharisees, the Jews were actively seeking. They wanted to be, they they looked to God. They They worshiped God. They served God. They just kind of got hung up in the in the law a little bit. They got a little bit too legalistic, but they knew there was a Savior coming. And so far, the Savior's been there in front of them for 30 years, and they haven't known it yet. And he's proclaimed, he's done these miracles. He's said, you know, a couple of weeks ago, he's the living water. So he's living water. He's light. He's God's son. But like Randy said, like a friend of mine said in his morning prayer, he prayed, he prayed, God, don't let me get us in any trouble that you can't get us out of. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> so that's kind of the way we do it. You know, we. Uh, but I, uh, you know, they have they, they were talking about a major change, and and we're going through that right now with this Obamacare mess. And uh, nobody understands it, not even the people that wrote it. But when he says well, that, I, that. Um, I never judge, but if I do judge you, it's not just me. Yeah. So that's right. pretty hard to understand. I mean, that's especially for these. I want, let me call them, you know, the, the learned experts of the the law. You know, this this group of people that would keep these this fair season. The experts, the religious leaders, and you know, I, I'm hesitant now. They were, they were religious slash more political connected, I think. But I do believe, you know, if you if you study about the, the Pharisees a, a, a little bit and know why would you even do what they did, and I think they were very committed to their work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think now I know uh, uh, probably a lot of them got. Uh, they strayed, you know, and got more in, into the probably the political side of this. But I believe, uh, you know, if you think about it, somebody really had to step up and and, and, and be as good as they were in, in the law. They studied that law, man. They knew it inside and out. Somebody needs to be the experts. And yet, well, I think it's okay to be the expert, but not to set yourself above everybody else. There's the problem. That you're you're trying right. to I, teach. I believe they did get self-centered on this, and, and uh, they lost their humility. Above all, I believe. And so, 
sometimes I try to give them, you know, some a little bit of leeway, but then but they just seem to create more problems. Well, I think then Jesus was subtly pointing that yeah. out, or sometimes not so subtly yeah, pointing sure. it out. <laughs> uh, you brood of vipers is not real yeah. subtle. No. But, uh, yeah, I've, 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 I've only been here a, a, a few times since you've been studying the book of John, but I'm just sitting, sitting here thinking how many times was Jesus an advocate in, in the times I've been here, and we've talked about it, for Nicodemus, the, the woman at the well, and now this lady. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in all reality, that's no place God ought to be with those people, but that's where he was at, and forgave them. Well, I think that, and that points out the difference between Jesus and the Pharisees. The Pharisees could point out the wrong, but they were so far above it, they didn't even associate with those people. Uh, if they found them, then they had to exact judgment immediately. Uh, although in this case, I think the fact that they caught the woman in adultery and wanted to stone her was secondary to just trying to trap Jesus. Right. They just used that as, okay, we got here's one. Let's see what he does with that. And now they're kind of amazed again. They back, you know, they one by one. I found it interesting in this particular scripture that it says that. Uh, they left the oldest first. Um, maybe the fact the older ones being the wiser ones and really actually going, you know, he's right. I can apply that to what I've learned out of this book, and that he, you know, I'm I'm certainly not sinless, so uh, I don't know if that meant that the younger ones were just more into the cause and they didn't really think about it. You know, they had a little more energy, so they were just kind of sticking around, or maybe they just simply wanted to see a stoning. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it really doesn't say. Can't pass that up. <laughs> but, I, I mean, I truly think they were, they, they, a lot of the stuff that they did was basically to try to trap Jesus or to catch him in a lie, and they couldn't because he was perfect. Well, I can't be as shared of all the Pharisees as Randy was, <laughs> because over the next few verses, uh, Jesus said in verse 40, um, 41, you do the deeds of your father. In 44, he says, you're of your father the devil. Yeah. And, and he was a murderer from the beginning. And, and he speaks a lie. Y'all ever heard people say lies lately in prayer? <laughs> I don't know how many times I looked at him and said, because their father is the devil and they can't do anything but lie. <laughs> I mean, really? I have. And, and so I'm not real charitable to the Pharisees. <laughs> but some of these people were saved later. Some of them were. Um, yes, they were. And I was just thinking yeah. about who besides Nicodemus, I guess. I mean, of course, you think of Paul. Look how zealous Paul was for persecuting Christians before his conversion. So um, some of them listened, and some of them had to be like Paul and just had to have a face-to-face -face <laughs> and a confrontation and a slap down and say, look, <laughs> what are you doing? Last week I asked a question about uh, Matthias and, uh, and Paul, so I looked up some stuff this week, and in Romans chapter 11, and verse 13, uh, it pretty well explains it, but uh, Paul goes on and gives detail of between what he was as a, as a Jew Mm -hmm. And what he was as a Christian, and he he makes he makes point that we that are saved are the seed of Abraham. We're engrafted Jews, whether we want to believe it or know it or think it at all, because we're in that uh, in in that category. How does that make you feel? If somebody says you're a uh, you're acting oh well. Being a Jew and acting like one, I guess, of course, we've, we use that as an adjective these days to describe a certain type of person, which to me, I think of uh, some rabbi-looking guy up in New York City selling diamonds or something. <laughs> That's just what I think of, the, that the people that I've learned over my lifetime that my family and some other people have, have uh described Jewish people as being, you know, they're all, they're rich because they're um, good business people or something, or they're crafty, or they're shrewd, or they're something, I don't know. Well, uh, that's that's a myth, though, because the Jewish people, a lot of Jewish people are just as poor. I live 
Oh, I, I agree. Didn't live in a Jewish I agree. I'm just I saying what town, my, we had my of, thought is. A lot of Jews, and they were they were just, you know, they were they were good lot business people. But I'll tell you one thing about it: there's no group in the world that's as clickish and helps each other. And I found this out firsthand. We tried to knock on doors and get arrested, and th those people stick together. You go into a Jewish community and start knock on the door. There'll be a police car there in five minutes because they are they're they're clickish and they're clannish and they all look out for each other. There's more than we do. It's what this time we should do the same. Perhaps you know, we should. I, mm -hmm. I think of the, the Pharisees. I went to a Catholic funeral and I sat by a Jewish Orthodox Jew. And I'm and I'm a foot washing Baptist. So <laughs> <laughs> you know it it gives you kind of an odd feeling. Yeah. But what I saw was what I got out of that, the Catholics were dedicated to their spirituality. The Jewish lady was to hers. Amen. Was to that's mine. And that's and true. Probably <clears throat> more so than me. Yeah. yeah. They are. So, you know, if we maybe we need to act a little bit more and be a little bit more dedicated to our religion than uh, we are. I, know, I can't speak for everybody else, but I speak for myself. Well, they said now Christians were the only religion in the world that, uh, that don't uh, men to men to our wounded, to let them die. Yeah. Somebody said we eat our wounded. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Huh? I don't know what that means. Maybe we kill them. We don't stand up for them. We don't help them. Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. He's not talking about cannibalism. We're not ready. <laughs> if we consume our wounded, it makes it easier to clean up the mess. They're not as messy. It's, it's, mess. easy. it's easier to have another job to clean that one up. That's what we're saying. <laughs> okay. The next section, identify the importance of judgment. And so we're up to verse 23 of chapter 8. And Jesus says, you are from below, he told them. I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore, I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Who are you? They questioned. Precisely what I've been telling you from the beginning, Jesus told them. I have many things to say and to judge about you, but the one who sent me is true. And what I have heard from him, these things I tell the world. They did not know he was speaking to them about the Father. How would they? Yeah except just listening to him. What if we what if we went somewhere this afternoon and there was some guy expounding some new theory, brand new theory, that was opposite of what we believe, what would we think? Yeah. We'd want to draw a core in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's crazy. Yeah, you know, and bring on I, the jacket. I, and then mm -hmm. uh, another example of that is uh, this is a this is an absurd example, but there, there's this old movie with Woody Allen called Sleeper, and uh, and he he's a guy that they he's been uh, in cryogenics for hundreds of years, and they find him and they thaw him out, and he's and so you know he's like confused. Here he is in the future now. And they're trying to check him out and see if he's okay. And everyone is smoking cigarettes, and they're giving him a, giving him a cigarette. And he goes, "No thanks." You know, he knows that those are bad for you. And they go, "Oh no, no, no! It's been concluded that these things are good for you now." It's like cause I know that's a crazy example, but it, it kind of supports what you're saying. We've been taught that cigarettes are terrible. Now all of a sudden, they discovered that they're not. And see how crazy that is. But and that is what you're saying is if somebody challenges. Something that we feel is is steadfast. It's like we we can't accept it, can we? Uh, and, and that's these guys. I had an experience uh, with a couple of guys that came out of prison. They'd been in prison for a good while. They remembered life as it was when they went in. Right. Oh yeah. And they went and bought clothes right. for that era. They were right. ridiculous. Right. <laughs> they thought they were ridiculous. Though. Right. Yeah. Like back in the seventies. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you know, were all that stuff. I was wondering though, why didn't you know? Please, don't, don't think I'm a heretic here. But I was just wondering when they said, when they they asked him, "Well, who are you then?" Well, what would have been wrong if Jesus said, "Well, I am the Messiah, the Christ, the Son"? That's what I was thinking. Why didn't he just tell him? Tell him. <laughs> 
because his hour was not yet. I know. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and that probably would happen. It's like to me. This is kind of like I don't want to say being around the bush here, but well, it's the same. It's the same problem we're having in the world today. Why? Why? Why don't they listen to us? Why? Why is First Baptist Church not having ten services a day? Or you know, I mean, they're out there. And we want to reach them. Every one of us agree, but they're, they're, they're not willing. They're, they're not willing. They gotta have. They gotta have their part. If we get them in. Well, if you read the the commentary in our Sunday school book, he's talking. He says that <laughs> that Jesus is here has used the question as a sarcastic challenge, something along the lines of, "Well, just who do you think you are?" Instead of sincerely saying, "Well, who are you?" They're they're throwing it back at him. It's like, "Whoa, wait a minute." Uh, who do you think you are being able to compare your saying that you're God, saying well, that you're you're that, that you're so? not well and he just said you are from below. I'm from I'm not of this world. You're from this world and I'm not. Well what does that mean? Where did you come from then? I I that's I don't know. I'm just saying this is what the, the guy the well, Sunday they, school they lesson ever, said, Who they, do you think you are? They had evidently heard or it hurts him say or somebody said about him because at his trial, that's what he was tried for, saying that he's the son of God. That was why got him on the cross. Right. Well, they were just trying to trick him up. What you're to well it says and Jesus was exactly who he said he had been saying he was. He didn't deviate from the script of truth. He didn't change his story or his identity then and now. He is the Savior and Lord who holds the authority to judge our attitudes and actions. Well, that's easy for us to say because we've read the whole book. Yeah. But Jesus knew their words, but he deeper. He knew their hearts. Right. And he knew mm -hmm. if they were asking him mm -hmm. that question with contempt, mm -hmm. right. they didn't deserve right. his best answer. Mm -hmm. So he said just what I've been telling them. Oh, right on. Yeah. Sure, you're a heretic, Randy. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And so he turns it back to say, hey, you know, I came from God. God cannot tell a lie. God is truth. And he said, I have many things to say and to judge about you, but the one who sent me is true, and what I have heard from him, these things I tell you. So if you, he told them everything, but they didn't get it. And when you read it on face value, it's hard to get it. It's hard to say, okay, how did, how was I supposed to get that? And I'm amazed, even like in here in this class, when I read this, and somebody in here comes up with something that I just didn't get, and I'm and I go, wow, thank you, Lord. That you know, they knew that He revealed it to them, to one of y'all, and then y'all reveal it to us. But the most thing you can do it is you may be right and whoever may be right because there's different applications to the scripture on one interpretation but you can apply it so many different ways yeah. so if you've got one application you go to another one and right i think you know, god uses that right. to yeah. apply to whatever we right. need yeah. he's feeding us yeah. and we get that that from the word that does feed us but these people didn't quite what did they need what were they missing were they so stubborn, or did there were their hearts so hardened that they just simply couldn't see it, or was it because of familiarity? I mean, and we've talked about that. If one of us in here stood up and said, "I am yeah. the Messiah," we'd all laugh. You go, well, "Yeah, right." We know where you're from. Oh, yeah. We know your parents. We know where you grew up. We know what you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, I, there wasn't anybody that knew. I mean, there was, Jesus didn't do anything that anybody could even go back and tell and tattle on him. I mean, he yeah, never said. When I read it. the scriptures, I, I want to manipulate that to conform with the way I want to do it. Yeah. I want to justify my act truth by what I read right. in the scriptures. Well, they, they were using the law in the wrong way. I mean, Jesus told them it was just a schoolmaster, and he gave an, an example if, you're, if your eye offended you to pluck it out. And uh, I've never seen anybody run around with one eye, have you? <laughs> and it was just to show how, how serious that, that they've taken the law. It was a schoolmaster. The greatest thing I, I learned in college when I went to college was how dumb I was. <laughs> and that's what the law is <clears throat> trying to do, is teach us that we're sinners. And is that's this, what it was meant to be. Is this encounter before or after he had performed miracles? And 
He had done. He had already done the the miracles, like the water into wine and the wedding. He had healed the uh, the the lame man at the pool of Bethesda. He so they had, had already seen the power right. of God work through him. Right. He so had that had the five thousand. That adds to their condemnation then, that they're still wondering, what else do you need to yeah. see or right. hear or know? Yeah. Well, in last last week's lesson, one of the comments that the people made were who can do better than what this guy we've seen the miracles that this man could he be them who could be the Messiah that would top what he's done and they asked that question that was right in line with the isn't this the guy they're trying to arrest mm -hmm. and how come they can't do it it really didn't answer that last week. It was just an observation from the, or it was a comment from the people in the temple area saying, we've seen all this. And of course, Jesus condemned some of them because after he fed the 5,000, and then they kept following him around, and he goes, well, you're not here just to see the miracles I can do. You just want to get fed again. You're hungry. You know, you want you want to satisfy your, your earthly needs and you're not really here to see that and you don't even get the miracle or the fact that it was a miracle or the help that we were giving people it was just the fact that you're too lazy to get up and go get your own food that's the way I took it anyway is that they and he condemned them for being that way instead of seeing well, that wasn't very tolerant <laughs> <What's that word? laughs> tolerant <laughs> yeah. Well, when he says here, okay, go back to verse 26, I have many things to say and to judge about you, but the one who sent me is true. What I have heard from him, these things I tell, but they did not know he was speaking to them about the Father. How would you interpret that? The If he said the one who sent me is true, they still didn't believe he was the Son of God. So that, or did he just say it in such a way that they didn't... I don't know. I don't understand all this, but I think what he's trying to do, what's trying to happen is he's trying to change a, a whole way of life, which he does for us, for salvation, and that's what he's trying to do with them. But uh, the exchange has kind of troubles me a little bit. I don't, uh, I'm like y'all, why didn't he just say, I'm the Messiah, let's get on with this thing. Yeah, I think they wanted him to stop being so vague. They wanted him to come right out and yeah, say it. Yeah, but yeah. then I think they would have used it against him. Right? Yeah, heresy yeah. right there. Yeah. Heretic, crazy guy. Yeah. They want to be able to condemn him. I think. Yeah. Well, I've been meaning to tell right. you all now, I'm the Antichrist. So. Are you? Yeah. See, so yeah. how are you going to believe that? You're not going to believe that. Well, good point. If I showed up next Sunday and said, I have a revelation this week, and that's who I am. Y'all need to believe me. We'll, we'll just shoot you in the head and we'll see if you can learn. The thing about it is, what's happened yeah, here is going to extend it on no. because we've got the Mormon church today. They believe Jesus is a prophet, but they don't believe he's the Son of God. Right. Garner Ted Armstrong and his, uh, they, they, they uh, didn't believe Jesus was God. They still hold to the Ten Commandments. Jehovah's Witness don't mm -hmm. accept. Uh, Jesus as being God. There's a lot of religions right. out there today that are practicing right now as we are here, but they don't believe Jesus. They believe right. he's a good man. They believe he was a prophet. Right. But folks, he can't be a good man if, if he's not if he's not God because he's a liar. Because he yeah. said, I and the Father are one. Yeah, that's right. right. I, don't, yeah, I don't know how people say that they thought he was a good man. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, if he was, if he, if he wasn't God, he lied, yeah, right? In, in July of 2006, uh, <laughs> in the Bent City Council meeting, a gentleman sat through the whole meeting, um, just like us, looked like us, moderately dressed, clean, perfect, sane. Um, walked to the podium, asked to address the the city council and the mayor said, I've been in your good city for the last few days. You've got a beautiful town. Um, good meeting tonight. I'm here to warn you of the coming disaster, um, the catastrophic um, events that are coming because uh, God is going to judge us because of our failure to honor the 612 laws of Moses 
and we have no hope. I'm just giving you fair warning. And uh, he turned around and walked out. How'd that work out? So that, that, you're right. That is in Benton, Arkansas. I mean, it's not a far away somewhere, Coopville, California, or yeah. somewhere else. <laughs> and I've got a videotape of it. If you, if it's, it's absolutely odd. He had a like a Walt, blue Walmart vest on. Had like a a badge with his picture on. It had a Razorback hog on his back. He was one of us. It looked like. Yeah. So was he a Christian? I don't know what he was. <laughs> he was a prophet. And so he disappeared. So, and I think he identified. He uh, there was there's a cult in Texas, and uh, he said I've been sent here by the prophet. Um, can't remember the dude's name. Yeah, we looked it up on the internet. No, it's not Jim Jones. It's. Um, Hey, David Correa. Something about an exploding baby or something. Yes, the, uh, the nuclear oh, yeah. baby. Do you remember that? He kept referring to the nuclear baby as being unleashed and gave a specific date. Uh, this was in July. The nuclear baby would be unleashed in September and the world would end. And I kind of wonder what happened to him now. Maybe his world ended. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. So he wasn't that. Yeah, but but the point he was taken. from the house of Yahweh in Abilene, Texas, oh, yeah. sent from the prophet at the house of Yahweh. The heart of all organization is self-preservation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every week I deal with people who reject the truth. Very obvious. Mm -hmm. January the 1st, all of our lives are going to be totally different than they are today. Mm -hmm. How many people can accept that fact today? Not me. Uh, you, you can't type an email to anybody without it being read as it is typed. Mm -hmm. If you do anything on Twitter, I don't know how to do it. It's here forever. And so man hasn't changed. We're going to take care of ourselves even if we have to reject the truth. Even if it's obvious truth. Good point. Yes. And so it's easy to look at people in the past and say, why didn't they? Yeah. The thing that bugs me is, why can't we see it today? Truth is always truth. Well, we're just like them, aren't we, Gerald? We're just like the Pharisees. We what you <clears throat> when, okay, let's just think as Christians. We want to start a mission. We want to build a church. Look at <clears throat> how we limit people. Pick out the location. That's going to cut out 50% of the people that's already located. How we decorate it, that's going to cut out a bunch of people because they don't feel comfortable. <clears throat> One time I had to go to a church in North Little Rock and the fellow said, and we're out in the middle of a soybean field. When you look at it, you think it's going to be a mechanic shop. There's a prefab metal building. You can tell they can put up the big steel. Lead. When I walked in, I think it make this church look poor. <clears throat> And so I was talking to him, and I said, where's your choir? And he said, oh, I have one. And I counted six guitars and drums up there on the <laughs> And I said, when this gets started on Sunday morning, you don't need the spirit. Because <laughs> there's going to be enough charismatic movement in here that's going to engulf anybody. <clears throat> but why people didn't accept Jesus said what he was saying because they weren't looking for it. As human beings, we have a filter in our mind. And it's obvious we can filter out things that did not fit to where we see life. And that's how these yeah, I want to say. Well, I just think about it. Jesus, if you'll read through the Bible, he talks about all the times he could see what knew what was in their heart, he knew their thoughts. They were mumbling over here. <laughs> 
Now, why did he condemn this woman caught in adultery? If he's God, did he know that she did it? We have to accept that fact. Why didn't he, why didn't he condemn her? Because he followed the law, so he's going to have two witnesses. He's the only one around in the dope, knowing that she did it. So he couldn't violate the Bible and condemn her because he was the only witness against her. And so <laughs> scripture works, the further we get from it, the more problems we have. And as our society, if we get farther and farther forward from these truths, that pretty soon it implodes. Oh, you're right. I, the further we get from the truth, the more complicated and complex we make it, right? Because isn't it true, you know, our, we try to find doesn't matter the topic, we make it so complex. So, so we're saying, why didn't Jesus say, I'm the Messiah? Yeah. And see, why didn't there someone was... on the front end say, this is what the <laughs> health care law really is? <laughs> there was a very uh, strong political leader in the Bible that asked this question, what is truth? And that was... Uh, the judge of Jesus, and and he wanted, he actually wanted to know the truth, and he went back in, and his wife said, "Don't mess with this guy." And I think, in a way, he probably knew, but he still would not, you know. Didn't he? Didn't he say what is truth? And truth was standing right there in front of him. And that's right. Yeah, that's there. You go. Truth was standing right there, looking at him, because it was Jesus, right? He wanted to let Jesus go, uh, you know. He valued his job. He valued the Roman government. You'll not be Caesar's friend. For the next section, identify the basis of judgment. Well, and we're talking about why didn't Jesus say that or why didn't he say that? Well, he's about to say, you know, he's about to tell them something. They're still not going to believe it. In fact, they're going to make them mad. And some of it's something that Gene has already uh, referred to. But starting in verse 42... He's, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, because I came from God, and I am here. For I didn't come on my own, but he sent me. Why don't you understand what I say? Because you cannot listen to my words. You are of your father the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, and has not stood in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he speaks from his own nature, because he's a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Who among you can convict me of sin? If I tell you the truth, why don't you believe me? The one who is from God listens to God's words. This is why you don't listen, because you're not from God. Which is pretty condemning. And I think he was talking to the Jewish people. No. Still they, to their, they, were they were God's favor. To the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. yeah. To the religious leaders. I'm sure they still hear that. That's awesome. Which is an Well, it's easier for me to bash the Pharisees because I can't argue back with them. <laughs> so they probably couldn't have accepted. They, they couldn't have. If he would have said, I'm your Messiah. They they would still well they had all their they already had all their reasons why it couldn't be well no I know who you are you can't be even if he right. said it plain out they knew who he was they had because Satan was in their ear saying eh he can't be you know that because he's you know he was born here he was doing this and um, when he was on the cross wasn't there somebody who said. Surely this was the son of Well, that was the centurion that was standing there watching it after the fact. He, he so the timing wasn't that. right. You know, the it was all about timing. Their life. You just didn't meet their expectations of what the Messiah should have right. been. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, doesn't well, God right. show up because in our lives a lot of times every day, many times a day, day, and we don't recognize that he I saw God all the time in the and all the stuff rocking solid down through there. I saw God in, in nature. It's incredible. The color, the majesty of nature this time of year up there. And I'm not saying that God is in nature, y'all. 
but his handiwork was just incredible. And I can take you to various times in my life when I'm God just stepped in and did something I could have no control over. But that makes me think, he did that, but how come he didn't do such and such? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know what? And, uh, Randy and I were sitting on our back deck yesterday uh -huh. having coffee, and we were watching the leaves falling yeah. like rain. Yeah. yeah. And I said, how can anyone see this yeah. and not believe in God? Yeah. I don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense. Sometimes people are so far ahead of us. They have that, they have that veil over their eyes. When I was a child on the farm, if an airplane flew over, we'd stop the team watching. Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. Still do that down here. <laughs> it was because very seldom did you. But I was talking with an older neighbor one time, and he said, Well, Fellow came up here and preached for us one Sunday, and he talked about how one of these days men are going to be flying through the air like birds. And said, if we ran him off, he wouldn't have come back for Sunday night. And he said, now when I see an airplane go over, I wish I'd had enough sense to have invited that fellow home for lunch and talk to him. Because he was way ahead of everybody else in this community. And so Jesus Lexi, was way ahead of him. Can you turn that off? Um,